Hi everyone, it's Miss M and guess what I did? So if you are part of my Google Classroom, you know you get complete access to me and I have been having students sending me some past papers that they've been working on. So what I did um, in this video, what you're gonna watch is you're gonna watch me correct and grade um, a past paper. So if you're in the Google Classroom, um, I you, you can go ahead and send me your um, past papers and um, under that special email and um, I will possibly potentially be able to do it on video for others and you'll be able to get direct feedback from me. Um, so basically I'm, I'm really hoping that this paper one that I corrected for you helps you to understand the grading a little bit more um, and just know that the answers that are provided I didn't go over exactly every single one and just know that you know it's not every answer that is given by this student is um, the only correct answer or the only correct way of answering these questions okay so um, if you want to get ready for this and you want to go through this grading um, go ahead and grab uh, psychology 9990 um, it is examination from 2018 paper 01 if you can see it on there the lights are so bright um, but um, it's worth 60 marks and um, our participant well I guess you have to wait to the end to see how our participant did okay so um, you know, when I was a teacher and I was grading, going through these papers, it's very difficult. So you might see me struggling a little bit on some of the questions, kind of going back and forth in my mind. Um, I want to give the points, but I also would love to be a hard grader because, you know, I'd rather tell you that you have to be a little bit better at this than tell you that you're perfectly fine and have you look elsewhere because, um, you know, at the end of the day, knowing how to answer your questions is just as important as what what are you going to put there for your answer okay and it has to be structured the right way so um enough said it's it's already a lengthy video go ahead and um good luck and um you know if you really like my content i'm, I'm really hoping to do more of these videos like um and like this video subscribe to my channel um share this content with your friends if they are teachers if they are other classmates of yours um, really appreciate it and um, you know if you need some extra help I'm working on some flashcards I also have the Google Classroom it is a, a $25 donation at the moment um, and all that stuff will be linked right in the description so good luck studying you guys okay so here is our first question um, I'm gonna go ahead and circle as I go through just so you get used to doing this too um, so normally um, when you open your Paper one, you're going to go to the very last question, um, but we're going to start at this first one. I'm not sure if the student worked from the back to the front. Um, we will see. I don't, I don't know. Um, so I, I also don't know if the student timed themselves. So state one aim. Okay, so state is important. This is a command word. So we need to make sure that we give a concise answer with little or no supporting details. Okay, so state one aim from Dement and Kleitman, Sleep and Dreams. Okay, so there were um, four aims, three that were in the book. And um, let's see, to investigate whether eye movement patterns are related to dream content. I'm going to go ahead and, and give that a plus one. Identify which one of the following statements is not true of Dement and Kleitman observations. Okay, eye movements are more frequent in dreams about distant objects. Okay, so um, that is the correct answer. All right, and that's worth one point. And if you notice, um, I'm giving pluses, okay, for the points, okay, because we don't deduct. Now, um, if the student would have answered multiple, we would have received zero. Okay. So from the study by Laney, false memory. Explain why the study was carried out. Okay, so when you are going to explain, you need to give clear reasons or use examples indicate how or why something happened um, or the reason behind, you know, 
basically the reason behind the study. Why was the study carried out, if that makes sense. So you're going to give details, um, two points worth of details, okay? The study was carried out to see whether implantations of positive false memories could have healthy consequences, like asparagus. Okay, so um, our first point is going to come from the study was carried out to see whether implantations of positive um, memories, well, could have a have healthy consequences. So, um, it's it's more about whether or not implantations of positive false memories could have been carried out. Okay, whether or not we could have even tested false memories um, and whether this could have led to the increase of liking food okay so um, it's it's possible that this is going to get one point um, we need a full explanation full explanation this isn't really linking in you know, false memories to a an example of a uh, what it could increase, like the increase of liking food. I think the word of, um, you know, it says liking asparagus, but so when you're explaining, you need to link these. Okay, so the reason I'm giving it one point is because I didn't really link the fact that. Um, the implantation, the implantation of this false memory. Okay. One, we're going to test whether false memories could even be implanted for food because, because we'd never done that. Okay. And explaining has to do with the background. Um, and then also to link this to, you know, what are these consequences? Liking asparagus, what does that mean? Like, um, remember, like I was used to tell my students, um, answer this in detail according to studies. You don't have to go into detail like you're rambling, but um, you know, whether this would lead to an increase in liking asparagus. Okay, there's no words about increase or decrease, and remember how important that is when, especially when we are creating hypotheses and stuff like that. Okay, so remember, if this might, if this would have just said to state or to name or identify or something like that, um, it's possible you could have gotten the two points, but uh, explain, you need to go into um, a little bit the, more reasoning and giving more examples, okay? I understand where you said like asparagus, um, but it's not about just liking asparagus. It's about increasing the liking of asparagus. Okay. <clears throat> and again, some people might think that I'm a harsh grader, um, but I'd rather be too harsh than too lenient. Okay. Now we have a B, so we know that it still has to do with Laney and false memory. Describe what the participants were told about the purpose of the study before it began. Okay, so um, we have describe what the participants, so specifically what they were told about the purpose of the study. Okay. Um, now, we have described here, so we need to give details um, or explain the main features, but it's only two, two parts. So um, let's read it. The participants were told that the study was investigating the relationship between food preference and personality. Okay, that's going to give them one point. And that they would be completing a series of questionnaires. That is definitely going to get them that other point. Okay, so um, this is unnecessary right here where it says they weren't told anything about false memories. They definitely got the two points there. Um, they could have saved some time um, and not written this last statement. Okay, so we have C. This is still Laney. Explain why the participants were not told that the study was about false memory when they arrived at the laboratory. Okay, so we have explain why the participants, so again the participants, were not 
Ooh, big one. Not told that the study was about false memories when they arrived at the laboratory. Okay, so we have three points here. Participants weren't told that the study was about false memories because of demand characteristics. Okay, so we're going to get one point for the demand characteristics right there. By deceiving them, participants would be more accurate in their report about liking asparagus. So this is, oh, I'm going to get another point because it's basically describing the state of our participants, okay? They're saying that they are going to be more accurate, okay? Um, and then we have increasing the validity of the study. And this is going to get them another point because um, this is true because we are, we are, by isolating variables and controls and by using deception, um, we are looking for more valid results. And... Um, Validity has to do with those controls that are more so letting us know what is not causing the behavior, okay? So um, if we are able to take demand characteristics out of the equation, which is our participants believing what is demanded of them or the ca characteristics that are demanded of them in the study, okay, which is falsifying their behavior, um, then our validity is going to increase. Okay, awesome, three points there. Okay, let's move on. Number four, new study here. The study by Baron Cohen et al. tested, um, or eyes test, used adult participants, although similar studies have used children. Okay, so that's, there's really no question in that part, A. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of marks on this paper because um, I had previously recorded this and um, it ended up portrait style instead of landscape. So um, I'll just let's see. So describe one methodological problem that could arise if child participants were used in the study. Okay, so we're not talking about ethics. We're not talking about the procedure here. We're talking about the methodology, okay? Children participants might not have understood the complex words if they knew what the emotions the eyes display, even if they knew what emotions the eyes displayed. Okay, that could be a point. Um, and they wouldn't be able to look the words up in the dictionary. Okay, so we're only looking for one and this is a good intro, but we're trying to link it to a methodology. So I think I was a little generous in giving this one point because without you linking, you haven't even answered the, the question. This person hasn't answered the question. I, I'm going to take this away. Because the question is a problem with the methodology. And you can notice in this entire question, there's nothing to do with the methods of the study. Okay, they're talking about children may not have understood the complex words. Okay, I, I understand that that has to do with um, how we structured the questionnaire, but they didn't completely finish their thoughts about where this comes into play for the methodology. Okay, we're left to kind of guess. So uh, we don't want to guess. We want to just know what you mean, say what you mean, mean what you say. Okay, B, explain one useful application of the findings if child participants were used in the study. Okay, so we are explaining something. Um, we're giving clear reason, um, you know, how or why. One useful application. Okay, how can the studies or the findings be applied to the real world? We want to explain one way, okay, for two points. So um, we could have... Basically, we're going to get to the point, and then we can have one example or one explanation. So, I also crossed out. It says, if child participants were used, let's just cross that out because that's a waste of time. We could get a better idea of the questions. Like, is somewhere being um, misunderstood and then makes changes so testing for autism would be more accurate. Okay. So 
this participant, this, this student, I'm sorry, didn't talk about any of the findings. So the two points are going to come from you telling me what one of the findings would be and then telling me how you applied it. Okay, so that's part of the explanation. And unfortunately, it wasn't done here. And even if this student was trying to say that a particular test might be more accurate, they're not telling me why the test being accurate. One, they're not telling me what test they're talking about. So technically, it would be the autism quotient because the theory of mind does not test for autism. Um, so first they had to, to label it, but then they also should have told me what's the benefit of it being accurate. Okay. Basically an, an answer could be um, so that we can test children at a younger age. So unfortunately there's no points in this question. Okay. So let's move on to question five. Okay. So I circled describe the conclusions from the study by Bandura on aggression. Okay. So we are describing something. So we're going to give detail, explain the explain the main features of the conclusions. Okay. And, um, three points. So we're basically looking for three statements that we can make, um, or that were found in the conclusions of Bandura. So the study was found that boys are more likely to imitate physical aggression seen in a male role model. Okay, so I did give a point for that, although the the answer, the conclusion is actually that the study found that boys are more likely to imitate physical aggression over girls. It didn't matter. The role model if the role model was male or female, it didn't matter in boys. They were still more likely to imitate physically aggressive um, behaviors over girls. Girls were more likely to imitate verbal aggression. Okay. Um, now, also in general, children do imitate observed behavior. And they also seem to understand gender stereotypes. So I did give um, a one point because in general... Children are showing that they do imitate behaviors that they observe, okay? Which is really important. Um, now, this last part. They also seem to understand ger gender stereotypes. Now, that is not in any of the conclusions of the study. I understand what they're trying to say, but they continue to go on and say because they saw the female model being aggressive, um, and they made comments such as that's way too, that's no way for a lady to behave. Even if that was the case, that is explaining behavior. It is not a conclusion. Okay. Let's look at B. It's a little longer answer here. So explain two ways in which the learning approach, okay, so we have learning approach is different from the social approach. Use this study by Bandura as an example of the learning approach, okay, so we know Bandura has to be in that example, and then um, if you want to use another study, you can use anything for the social approach, just make sure that you use Bandura for the learning approach, okay? So we're basically looking for um, the student to identify an aspect of the learning approach as it relates to Bandura. And then that specific, um, you know, example, you need to explain how that's different from the social approach. You don't necessarily need to put another study in there, but what you, this is four points. Okay. Where is this mark right here? It's four points. So you're going to want to do this twice. You're explaining it two ways. So one point is going to be for identifying the aspect of learning. Other point is going to be how it is different from the social approach. If the learner does not relate it to Bandura, there won't be any points, unfortunately, because that is specifically what the question asks. Okay. 
The learning approach explains behavior in terms of learning. For example, through social learning theory. Whereas the social approach focuses on how individuals' behaviors are influenced by the environments that they are in. Research methods used in the learning approach are lab experiments, so there are many controls and standardized procedures. For example, in Bandura, the controls were the time differences between observations or the amount of time the children were in each stage of the room. Okay, so um, let me just... Unfortunately, this first two part, the two part of the question, okay? Um, so we know that this is like going to potentially be worth two points and this is another example. Now, there's no example of Bandura in this first part, okay? Um, they're saying that, they're just telling me what social learning theory is. They need to actually identify the aspect of learning and give me the example of social learning theory in Bandura. Okay. They're just giving me a general statement about learning, social learning and, um, about, I'm sorry, about learning approach versus social approach in this one. Okay. Um, I'm not going to give the points for it because I don't want you to think that that's okay. I don't know if the graders are going to give the points for it. I, I don't think that they would because, you know, you're not relating the study to Bandura and you're not specifically talking about what social learning theory is. You're just making this statement, okay? So let's look at the second part to see if we can get points here. So research methods use learning approach are lab experiments. Mm, let's think about this. Okay, so, I mean, we have Yamamoto that is a, well, hold on here. I mean, social approaches can have lab experiments in them. So just to say that the learning approach has lab experiments Let's see, what does it say about social? Social approach has field experiments. Mm, I mean, not all of our social approaches were field experiments. Okay, so. Let's see. Sorry, it might take me a little while. I'm going to see if, how many points I can actually give them in this question. So, I mean... What they're saying does complete, it does make sense that they're trying to say that they're in, in learning, when we are doing learning approach, um, that we are probably going to want a more controlled environment. So therefore we're going to have lab experiments. Um, and I mean, this is going, this point is coming also from the fact that they said Bandura has the controls, the time differences between the observations. I think they're talking about, um, you know, observing every five seconds for, you know, it was like 120 instances of data, I, I believe. It's like 20 minutes each participant. Okay. Um, and the social approach has field experiments like pil Piliabin. Okay. Um... Now, I understand this part, but, I mean, it's not so much that they, see, it's not so much that they have more field experiments. It's more about, they're studying behavior in context. So, the situations have more ecological validity in the social approach, I would say. Not necessarily going to be a field experiment. I mean, Piliabin was the only field experiment. I mean, in the social approach, yeah. Yamamoto was a lab experiment, you know, so... 
I mean, you know, you don't have to break it down like this person did. It seems you could have had one, you know, this whole one could have gotten four, could potentially get four points. Okay. So let's see the learning approach. Let's see if they could just redo this, something like this. The learning approach typically uses rigorous laboratory experiments. For example, in Bandura, a controlled environment with adult models. Um, showing pre-decided behaviors and being observed through a one-way mirror. All what I just said is only going to get you one point. Whereas social approach often studies behaviors in context. Observers in social situations use field experiments. Okay, so there just needs to be a little bit more information in these. Okay, there's not enough depth or understanding. It's Oh, goodness. Look, like I said before, I'd rather be too hard on you and, and make you do a little bit more detail. So, you know, it's in this here where you need to say a little bit more that, you know, the reason that we are using field experiments is because we want more authentic behavior. You know, the, the behavior is going to be more in context of what we are doing in our normal lives. Okay. But just that one statement, one sentence is not going to get points. Okay, let's move on. Okay, six. So we are going to describe one aim from the study by Saavedra and Silverman. Okay, to see, and this is two points, to see if specific phobias, buttons, of a nine-year-old boy can be treated by targeting both fear and disgust. Okay, so this is definitely going to get us one point here. Phobia of a nine-year-old boy, that's going to get us one point. Okay. B, explain two results from the study by Savita and Silverman. Ooh, look, relate to the aim that you described in part A. So this means that whatever you answer here, you need to link it in your answer. It needs to link back to this, what you answered here, your answer here needs to, to get these full four points. Okay. All right. So let's read it first. One try. Before the imagery exposure therapy treatment, the boy was able to hold buttons, but he said that they smelled disgusting. Imagery exposure helped minimize his distress. For example, his most fearful experience rated an eight was hundreds of buttons falling on his body. This reduced to five mid therapy and then three after the exposure. Uh, at the post-treatment, six months later, he reported minimal distress and was able to wear buttons on his school uniform. Okay, so um, in this question, you're going to get one point for basically identifying a result and then another mark for explaining the link back to the aim. Okay, and um, we have two results here, so you're basically going to do that twice in order to get the full four points, okay? Okay, so where they basically say, let's see, but that before that, um, the basically they, the button smelled disgusting, that's gonna be one point right there, and then imagery exposure helped to minimize his distress. That's another point right there. Okay, so um, this part where he's talking about the fear or she, I'm sorry, fear is gone basically, where report minimal distress and was able to wear buttons again. Okay, now this part where it says, for example, the most fearful experience. Okay, so, bef so they were able to relate distress back to, or disgust, I'm sorry, back up to here where they wrote about disgust up here. And then they're going to talk about fear here. 
and relate that back up there. Okay, the fear I experience, hundreds of buttons falling all over them. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and think that they're talking about the imagery portion of this and give them the point for that. So, um, basically, imagery sessions help to reduce disgust of buttons and this reduce the boy's level of distress. So, um, when the treatments, you know, there was cognitive reconstructing helped the boy um, make progress from larger to smaller buttons. And then after further treatment, he could wear the buttons. Um, or you could have said something like, when the treatment changed from behavioral exposure tasks to imagery sessions, the boy's phobia of buttons reduced and then eventually stopped. So that's kind of what I'm thinking that they're saying here is once they started to use the imagery treatment and imagine the buttons falling all over them, it started to reduce um, his distress and his fear. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm being a little too lenient on this one, but I think they got the majority of the points in this. Okay. So studies in cognitive psychology could be used to help workers doing repetitive jobs who find it hard to concentrate. Describe how the results of the study by Andrade doodling could be applied to help with this problem. Okay, so describing, and we have to talk about workers. It's going to help workers with repetitive jobs, help them concentrate. Sorry about all that. Okay, so we have to describe how these, how the results of the study are going to link, okay, to all of those things, all right? Um, and this one is, you see, that's four points there. And when we describe something, remember, we are giving detail or explaining the main features, okay? Now. Andrade's results suggest that workers with repetitive jobs who find it hard to concentrate should perform a secondary task such as doodling whilst working. Results from the study showed that those who doodled recalled more monitored information, names, and incidental information, places. All right, so they got some good um, results in here. Means of a 7.5, names of places, Control group mean was 5.8. This mean, this means that workers' concentration would be better and they may even gain additional information preventing mistakes in their work. Okay. Okay, so right away I see we're going to get some points here. Okay, for naming um, or describing some of these results that are, are part of the situation. Um, so you can get some points for describing the results of Andrade's study, um, applying the results described to one of the situations given up here. Okay, so um, let's see. Workers would be better at what? Better at what? And they may even gain additional information about what? Okay. Oh, I thought we were doing a little bit better on this one. Okay. So we need to be a little bit more detailed. Okay. Don't leave us hanging. Better about what? May even gain in additional information about what? Let's see. Andrade results suggest that workers with repetitive jobs don't remember that being was that exactly I mean yeah they should perform a secondary task such as doodling okay let's see I mean they could have wrote something along the lines of like if they could doodle while doing their job then they could possibly um, concentrate better or they could have said something like so they will be able to notice and remember things that they have to do better when they doodle maybe each one of those could have given another point like they had the right idea but just saying be better isn't isn't giving me enough information and just saying 
gain to gain information. I don't like I don't know if you're talking about for the researchers gain information on the participants for or, or I mean I mean no we're talking about workers but what what information are the workers gaining? Do you mean I think you just might mean knowledge preventing mistakes in their work. Okay. I'll give you points for preventing state mistakes in their work. Okay. So we got three there. All right. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. According to Milgram, his study on obedience produced two surprising findings. Describe both of these surprising findings. Okay. Describe. And we have four points. So that means basically... Come on, guys. Remember P. We're going to give the point and then an example or an explanation. Okay. And then you want to do that twice. Do that two times. So you're going to get a point here, a point there, and you want to do that twice. All right. Let's see how we did here. Findings. Okay. All participants gave shocks up to 250 volts. At 300 volts, five people stopped. All right. So, um, definitely true. 26 participants went to the full 450. So that's 60 to 63% of all participants. That's one. All right. So um, now we're basically just looking for the descriptions that go with each one of these. Okay, so this would be identifying the finding, finding one, finding two. So let's see if we can um, see the description of those findings in here. Another surprising finding was the amount of tension and emotional strain displayed by participants. That is true, but um, we're only looking for two. Remember, two findings, and we got those two. But maybe if this, per let's see, did, did they explain it? After surprising findings, finding was about the tension and the emotional strain just ways on the participants. They were seen to be sweating, trembling, laughing, nervously digging their fingernails into their palms. The participants even had seizures, with one being quite severe. Okay, yes, this, I mean, this is all true. Okay, so basically what this, you know, what this is missing from getting its full two points to be like a full collected answer here, because I was basically looking for there to be, you know, this is the identification of the finding, and then you want to make some type of description of it afterwards, like why was that surprising? What was surprising about this? Okay. What was surprising about this or, or whatever, you know, I mean, I mean, I could go ahead and give the one point to this instead of the one point to this, but still there's no connection here with the description. They just continue to say more of the results. If they would have linked something like, if they would have actually linked Hey, despite the fact that participants were sweating, trembling, laughing nervously, digging their fingernails into their palms, 26 participants went to the full 450 volts. So that's 62% of all participants. Like that is a complete answer or that's a complete two, two points there. It's just not written that way, though. It's written almost backwards. They're basically just telling me the two results. Ugh. I mean, I can go ahead and, and we can link these. I would have linked these in a better way. I don't know if... Um, I'll give you the one point. I'm not... 
100% sure if on the exam if you write it this way out of order if they're going to give you the points but I understand what you, you're trying to say um, in that this answer or this reason is linked to this but there's still no other I need another finding with another surprising result okay nine <clears throat> The study by Canley used brain scans. Okay, so explain why brain scans are used in biological approach to psychology. Okay, so I mean, right off the bat, we know that biological, um, you know, we can't really look inside the brain and using anything that is scientific is going to increase, you know, the reliability or of any biological research. So use ex an example in your answer. Let's see, four points. And this says, explain why brain scans are used in the biological approach for four points. Okay. And it says, use an example. Brain scans such as fMRI. Okay, so there's your one example. So you're not going to get any more points for that one example. Are used to investigate the role of different regions of the brain. Okay, you see how they just cross this out it's almost if they maybe had maybe if that was right and I could read it I might give them the points for that okay um, they record brain activity in a non-invasive manner by detecting changes when oxygen is released in a study by Canley all participants saw neutral and negative scenes The activity of the amygdala and the results from the self-reports were recorded. A higher degree of activity... Okay. Explain why brain scans are used in the biological approach to society using an example in your answer. All right. Now, let's really look at this question here. Okay. Um, I don't know why I said that this was the example. I mean, this is what we're talking about, brain scan, but this will be your example down here. So um, you're going to get one point for any correct reasons for using brain scans in the biological approach. You could get, you know, two to three points for correct reasons why relevant examples um, from Canley in here. All right, so let's just see if we can give them one more point. Um maybe let's see see once once they start here they start to tell me the results of the study a higher degree of activity in the left amygdala during encoding was predictive of recall only when the scenes were emotionally results of the study suggested okay so unfortunately none of this is going to help me with points where i can find some points in here I got that point for there, that for there. Okay, just uh, three points in that one. Three points only. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so number 10 from the study by Piliavin, Subway Samaritans. We need to outline two aims. Outline two aims, aims, aims. Okay, outline two aims. So when we outline something... Um, you're just describing the key points without any detail. Okay? It looks like they did a really good job with these bullet points. Feel, feel free to use bullet points. Okay, so you're going to basically get one point for describing one aim briefly. And if you describe the aim in clear detail, you'll get two points for it. So we're definitely looking for two different aims here. So to test the diffusion of responsibility in a real life setting. Okay, to investigate the effects of the following variables. Race of the victim, type of victim the model's behavior, helping uh, critical or late, the size of the group of bystanders naturally occurring. Okay, so um, to test the diffusion of responsibility in a real life setting, that's gonna get one point. Um, that's just very brief. And um, all of these actually are different 
types, kind of different aims, and they're stated briefly. There's no detail, so I'm just going to pick one um, that sh probably should have been stated differently. Okay, because, I mean, we're outlining it, but it just says the type of victim. So, I mean, you could have said to see if people help drunk victims. Okay. Uh, to see if people help within their own race. Something like that. I mean, I'll give you that one point there, but um, we need to go into detail a little bit more on each of those. Okay, so discuss at least two strengths and two weaknesses of the study. All right, this is eight points. Um, discuss two strengths, two weaknesses of the study, and this is Piliavin, in case you can't see it. Um, okay, so when we discuss something, we're going to give imp an important argument for and against. So um, it's eight points, two strengths, and two weaknesses. So you're going to get four points from two strengths, which is, you know, one strength will get you two points. The next strength will get you two points. And one weakness get you two points. Next next weakness get gets you two points. I'm gonna say that you need to basically, um, you know, state. Well, let's just go through this. Let's see. Okay. So one strength of the study is that it used both qualitative and quali quantitative data. For example, observers collected data on the race of the helpers and how long it took them to help. They also recorded down any remarks made for example women made comments like i wish i was strong enough to help this explains to us as to why the helpers were mainly male okay now see i i like this as possibly four Two, two points and that fourth point would have came when they would have told me why it was an exact strength to have the quantitative data. What was the strength about it? Where was, where do they tell me that they can statistically analyze the data because it was quantitative? Okay. And I mean, they're telling me they also recorded down any marks, remarks made, and they're giving me examples of it, which I do like, but you're still not telling me why that is a strength. Okay, we are basically able to figure out why people did what they did if we use qualitative data, um, but unfortunately in this study, we didn't, you know, actually get to talk to anybody. So qualitative data is not going to be that big of a strength. Um, okay, so I'm going to give two points. One point for the quantitative data. I'm sorry. One point for the quantitative data. How long it took them to help. I'm not convinced that I can all right I'm gonna have to come back to that one guys I'm sorry it's taking too much out of me I'm gonna have to come back to it um because what I'm looking for if this is the strength if this is two strengths in this because look at this answer okay so there has to be four points in here. There has to be two weaknesses in here. And you have to tell me why they're weaknesses. You're discussing the strengths and the weaknesses. You're discussing the good and the bad. And you haven't told me why this is good. Okay? You haven't. You just told me what you did. Which is great. But that's not going to give you the points. Okay. Um, the sample size is quite large 4,450 people which is a strength 
However, the generalizability is still low. This is because the participants were all from somewhere near Harlem and they all traveled on the train from 11 to 3 p.m. on the weekdays. So they might have had similar experiences. That's good. Okay, so... The problem here is they say, which is a strength, however, the generalizability is low. So you're not actually even telling me that the generalizability is a weakness in the study. You're basically saying that the amount of people is a strength and the generalizability is low. All right. All right. So they're basically just justifying their reason right here, where it says, therefore, the study isn't generalizable. People from different countries may behave differently. Okay, so one point there, one point for their example of those. Okay, that makes sense. This makes sense. We're talking about why the study is not generalizable, why this population makes the study not generalizable. Okay, the problem is that that's still only one weakness and that is still only one strength, which is the data. Okay, I'm still trying to look. Recorded, any remarks? Explains to us why... Oh my gosh, guys. Oh, I wish you could talk back. This explains to us why the helpers were mainly male. Okay, I'm going to give them a point for that because they're talking about the conversations on the on the train. Okay, so this is getting a total of four points. <clears throat> All right, so I gave them the points for telling me that it was the data, quantitative data, and they're linking it, um, I'm sorry, qualitative data, and they're linking it to the remarks that were made by participants on the train, and they're telling me that this explains, um, this is why helpers were mainly male. Ugh, wait a minute. This is not telling me why this is a strength. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Crossing that out. You guys, thanks for putting up with me. Now you can see how hard it is for teachers to grade 80 different papers, which I have a solution for. I will definitely be coming out with um, some teacher edition how to teach this course. So, um, and you won't spend your entire life grading papers, okay? But um, watching these is good because, I mean, at least you can see the way I do it. Um, and I think that I'm pretty hard in some areas. Maybe I'm lenient in others. Maybe some of you will disagree with me, but I mean, I've passed a plethora of students. So, um, even when I was on maternity leave, <laughs> so, um, something's working, something's working enough at least. Right. Okay. Evaluate the study by Schachter and Singer. Oh, okay. We are evaluating. This is a 10 pointer. So guys, I mean, we could use grave, um, this is that 10 pointer that I was talking about where I said, you want to go to this one first because you can spend, you want to spend at least 15 minutes on this question. It's worth 10 points and I would spend a minute and a half per point. Okay. So that's like 15 minutes you can devote to yourself here. All right. Now let's say evaluate. Now, before we discussed for eight points. Now we're evaluating, which is we're going to discuss, but now we are going to judge the overall worth of, or make an attempt to, you know, weigh your opinions back and forth. So where we have discussed here, two strengths, two weaknesses. Um, we were only given one strength and one weakness and we were only told to discuss which is just you know give the important argument for and against 
often requires some type of little conclusion to why it's a strength or weakness. But now we're moving on to evaluate. And when we evaluate, we are going to discuss, yes, um, but we are judging the worth of it. We are making an attempt to weigh our options on was this a good study or was this a bad study? Which this means there's going to be a conclusion. So if you can imagine doing the same steps that you would do with discuss, where I said to, to do, you know, you have, let me go back to this, where we would have two strengths and two weaknesses. Okay. And that's your eight points where you're going to get four here and four here. Now, when we evaluate, you're going to get four here and four here. And then you basically have a, a last paragraph that's linking everything back to get your two extra points. Or we could do grave, um, where we do we evaluate the generalizability, reliability, application, validity, and ethics. And that's five different areas. Um, you know, and then we're hoping to get two points within each by, you know, giving, um, an example and an explanation. Okay. So one strength of the study is the standardized procedures. Awesome. Tell me why. Use, uh, which increase the internal validity of the study. For example, in the angry condition, the stooge would flick through the questions, um, and make statements such as to hell with this. Awesome. All right, let's look for another. Well, I guess we could keep going in this. Um, it's not wrong in the evaluation. It didn't specifically say two strengths and two weaknesses in this question. So um, it looks like this student just kept going with the strengths. I'm going to see if the points are still here. So he would also go to the same place as the participants so that they could relate to his remarks. Um, okay, I'm not going to give any extra points for that. This increases the internal validity as the way the stooge acted was the same for all the participants in the condition. All right. Hmm. But why, okay, increasing the internal validity, okay, I can give you two points for that. So they're basically saying that it increased the validity because the stooges were able to act the same way for all the participants, so they needed to say, um, well, I mean, that really... The, the stooge didn't actually act the exact same way for all the participants. But he did have these same statements. Okay, so we'll do that. So we'll give you four points. On the other hand, a weakness would be the use of self-reports. This is because self-reports are quite objective. They are quite subjective, actually. It is the subject self-report. And open to bias. Okay. Now, if you would have said subjective, you would have got the points there. But you said objective, which is not open to bias. Okay. The participants knew that the researcher would see their answers. And so they might be hesitant to report their aggression in the anger condition specifically. This means that the participants' self-reports might not be a true measure of their emotions. Okay, I understand where you're going with is in general, they might see their answers. So they might be hesitant to report the amount of aggression. Okay. I'm going to give a point for that. And this means that the participant self-reports might not be a true measure of their emotions. Um, I'm going to give you a point there. Don't forget that um, actually in the anger group, those who were told they were going to be angry, which is the informed group, they actually wrote down that they were angrier than those who were in the ignorant group. 
Um, so that's kind of crazy to think about. So another weakness is the study is low in ethics. For instance, participants were told that they were going to be injected with Suproxen when in reality they were being injected with epinephrine and adrenaline. Okay, so I'm going to stop you right there because actually the fact that the study... I'm going to take this back. Um, usually... I mean, they're not saying why that, okay, so they're saying that a weakness was that the study was low in ethics. If they would have said, now they're talking about this drug being injected, Suproxen, if they would have said something like we caused harm or we imposed harm or something like that, then I would accept it. But they're basically saying that deception wasn't necessary, which technically deception was a strength of the study because it helped our participants act more natural. Um, so unfortunately this is not going to get any points. In addition, those in the Epimus informed group were told the incorrect side effects of the injections, which might have made them distress. I mean, Technically, technically, the ignorant group didn't know that anything was going to happen either, but they still had, you know, they still had all of that. So, okay. <clears throat> all right, guys. So, um, I'm going to, let's tally these up. Okay, so I just tallied up the points, um, and we have a total of 38 points over 60. Now, um, I actually think that this participant did pretty well. Um, 